Welcome back. Oh, I believe we're at the second part of uh, this ISS NYC uh, job fair. And this is only like, not even the first day because the recruiters came yesterday. Candidates are slowly coming on in, doing their interviews and stuff. And tomorrow is actually interview. So these guys, I heard somebody just recently, she was like six four, you know, but she said she has like five, um, five offers. So wow. not six four, I'm six four. She was at least seven feet, but you know, so I asked her, does she have activities in, uh, you know, sports that would, would, would be the giveaway for her? I didn't want to be stereotypical, but you're tall, you know, probably agile, agile too, as a top <laughs> six four, you know. So without further ado, please introduce yourself to our listeners and what school you are. And add in, do you have any sports? Oh, okay. Good, good lead, and I appreciate yeah. that. Probably going to eat an experiment. <laughs> like, right? it's, it's all good. It's all good. Um, my name is Stephanie Briarty, and I'm from Valley Forge Academy in Qatar. Mm. Uh, bonus points if you can point to Qatar on a map, because mm. not everybody can. It's pretty small, but it's in the Middle East, um, just across from Dubai, about a 30 minute flight from Dubai. Okay. So you're familiar with that. Okay. Uh, sports, <laughs> um, I'll kind of lead in. As a school, um, we focus on five cornerstones as a, a value education institution, not just academic excellence, but one of our cornerstones is physical development. Mm -hmm. And so sports, health, nutrition is a big part of what we do in our school. Right. And so we focus on sports activities, games, uh, competition. Um, and as an all boys school, we know that those are really uh, motivational for a lot all of our students. School. Yes, all boys school. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> not not something you see a lot of, I think, right. in the States. Exactly. Um, so we have a pretty unique student body. Okay. Um, and we look for very um, a, a special kind of teacher as well, because you got to have that energy to match and the the passion um, to really reach out. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they they need that. <laughs> okay, so I feel like the question is changing up in my head here. No, Go for it. So how exactly are you empowering these young men at your school? Good question. Um, Qatar is a really interesting country because it's a young country. And, um, and I'll be honest, a lot of the boys that we see that come to us have suffered from affluent neglect. Mm -hmm. uh, their drivers, their nannies have raised them, have bring them to school every day. Uh, we At the beginning of the year, we had a 14-year-old come in with his nanny carrying his backpack. And we I said, oh, okay, <laughs> we're going to work on that, right? right? right. Um, and I mentioned the cornerstones, other things that we're working on is leadership, mm -hmm. uh, character development, and personal motivation, because we want them to be citizen leaders, not just show up to school when they feel like it, get some great, you know, it's more than just that. We want these young men to become um, citizen leaders and, and impactful in their community and in a good way. Okay, right? okay. Is it only men that is teaching no. these uh, these students, nope. these other young men, <laughs> or is it also um, women and men? That's a, a good question, actually. Yeah, we have a pretty diverse staff. Um, I think we have 25 or so countries that we're represented from. Um, we are pre-K through grade 12, so mm -hmm. all ages. Uh, and I would say in our kind of kindergarten space, it's mm -hmm. mostly female teachers. Mm -hmm. And as they get older in the school, so for example, in secondary, is mostly male teachers. Right. Okay. You speak of Qatar. Okay? Yeah. We already spoke of sports. <laughs> and I guess let me just, for those who do know where Qatar is, so <laughs> if you could just speak a little bit, I guess, about either the safety. Oh, yeah. It's a great religion. question. Sure, of course. That's a big uh, right. concern for right. some people. Right. Sure. People if Absolutely. And that's, to go to I, and I appreciate that because that is a good question and, and something that I want to be frank about, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a big choice to move to the Middle East. Right. Uh, I was nervous, I'll be honest, mm -hmm. as a, but this. But it's great. Um, uh, Qatar is a really interesting country. It's about 3 million people, but only about 300,000 Qataris. Mm -hmm. And so the rest are all expats from all over the world, just like our staff. Okay. And so there's a huge um, expat community, obviously, from every country. Everything is in English, so it makes it very easy. A lot, a lot of people call it expat light. Because mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, I still have Papa John's and McDonald's okay. and Starbucks. Okay. And you know, a lot of that. Candy, I mean, a lot of people <laughs> come over here for certain candies. Yeah, Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I miss Pop-Tarts. <laughs> but most everything, it's really easy to get. Um, we even have Amazon. Uh, it's, it's, mm -hmm. So it's definitely not hard, um, and it's a completely safe place to live. Um, I walk around, I take the metro, I leave my purse in the front seat of my car, unlocked, parked anywhere in the city. Oh. It doesn't get touched. It doesn't get. There's a viral video on Instagram of a man in a mall food court that leaves his laptop, his cell phone, and cash 
yeah. goes to a store and tries on clothes and comes back and it's all yeah. sitting there. Yeah, it's sitting there. Wow. Completely safe. My kids go and play in the street like in the 50s. You mm -hmm. know how you hear just send your kids out and they'll come home at dark. I, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what I do. yeah, and they they go and they come back. And if you know they pop in a neighbor's house to get a snack mm -hmm. or you know, they come by, right. but it's yeah. it's great. It's completely safe. Schools are good. Yeah. It's easy to travel. You can go anywhere in the world on a direct flight. Mm. Anywhere. Interesting. Great. I love Thanks it. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. How would they treat someone like me? Honestly, because oh. it's so diverse, there there's such a wide range. It it nothing is is bothering anybody. Oh. Everybody, you know, it, you kind of people, sometimes people stay in their own lane, maybe if you will. But I like I said, I can go anywhere i can go by myself i drive right. it's it, people are very respectful mm -hmm. and hands off and um, give you your space so what about the religion speaking of sure respect. yes you did ask me about that yeah that's um really interesting um so it is not a, a religious freedom country but that's only for the citizens so without being too specific i'm christian Christian and I go to my church there every week and there's a you know a metal detector to make sure that we're safe going in but it's not a problem it's encouraged it's it's easy it's safe it's so you see uh, there's a whole religious complex where there is a variety of churches um outside of the, the Muslim faith of course which is most of the locals and some of the expats too okay. um but it's kind of nobody is forcing anything. I, I wear what I want. I'm, I'm modest, but okay. I don't cover up. I, I wear my hair down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem at all. You spoke about bars inside the, yeah. inside the, um, inside the church. <laughs> no, inside the church. no uh, metal detector. Yeah, no, metal detector. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to get into the religious complex as a, a way to keep everyone safe. Make sure. Yeah, but there are there are no guns, so it's and it was kind of a weird thing. thing. You know, I, how detectors are so long. It's know, like going in an airport. Like, what are we you checking know, for exactly? That's a good question. You know, I don't know, but safety measures. Exactly. You exactly. want exactly. safety measures? There it goes right there, right? You know, awesome. What about the teachers? Um, is there room for entry level to move up to somewhere else? You know, great like, question. You know, yeah, our school is interesting because this is just our second year open. So we're young. Uh, last year we had fewer than 200 students. This year we have about 400 and next year we're expecting 800. Oh. So we're growing oh. very rapidly. Um, we have about 95% teacher retention moving into next year, which we're proud of. So we're actually here recruiting because we're growing, not because we're back. <laughs> um, and, and we're really, because we're growing, um, there's a lot of, of need in that someone will come this year, especially, and say, hey, why isn't there a social committee? I, I want to start a social committee. And we said, please start a social committee. Fantastic. And so people are able to find things that they're interested and passionate about in the classroom and then outside the classroom as well to develop our staff professionally, personally, um, making friends. They do excursions, uh, just went out into the desert, you know, desert safari, as we call it riding camels, doom bashing, all that kind of thing. It's a lot of fun. Um, traveling together, for example. Um, so we are promoting from within, absolutely, sometimes in the need just because we're growing, but then also sometimes we made titles. You know, we didn't have a curriculum coordinator and our second grade team leader this year said, I, I kind of want to focus on the curriculum development. Yeah, and we said, Oh, congratulations well, thank you <laughs> finish your class load this year but the next year curriculum coordinator you're in oh, wow. um, so it's a really cool place to be kind of wow. on this ground level and then help yes. develop and grow the students yes. okay so we're speaking earlier you have said something about like some type of restrictions in regards to like age is it for um, the students or is it for the teachers and why the Age restriction. That's a, an interesting question. Um, I guess I'm not aware of a student age requirement. Oh, well, no. <laughs> uh, maybe I, uh, Ministry of Education can be strict sometimes about that, um, but they do have limitations on teachers, um, and that's just part of the process. It is what it is. So, for example, um, Qatar doesn't allow a standard classroom teacher to be over the age of 50. So that is a limitation of principal, something like that, that they uh, value the experience a little bit more can be, but just kind of your regular homeroom teacher, if you will, mm -hmm. has to be under the age of 50. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it, does, is that working out? Is that on purpose? Like what is... I, I won't speak for Qatar. Okay. Well, no, <laughs> but for our school, we find 
um, often the younger teachers mm -hmm. match the energy of the boys. Exactly. Exactly. It exactly. Boys. exactly. Right. It is some boys. I forgot that part. It is <laughs> and, all boys. And you can you can have a day. Right? <laughs> oh, sure wow. Um, okay. Thank you for that. Um, and I guess we'll go on to my next question uh, that I've been asking. No, there's two questions I've been asking. Everybody. Let's go back. Okay. What's the weather like over there? <laughs> I'm asking everybody that. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, the winter, like right now, it's gorgeous. Probably 70, 80 every day. It's lovely. Uh, everybody's out on the water at the beach. Um, right now. Yeah, yeah the water may like a little too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. um, it's great. And, and especially spending out in time in the desert. A lot of camping. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. Desert nice. camping. It's a whole other level wow, of camping. Wow. Um, summer's hot, I'll be honest. But they... <laughs> Can be, can be in maybe July, but that's when most expats leave. Um, that's when they go home. And our academic staff has some off, and so everybody goes home to visit their family, and they they miss it. So okay, okay. it's it's fair. Uh, and then they they recognize that, and so they've even air conditioned the walkways at parks. Oh. So even in the summer when it's hot, you're fine when you're out for your jog in a park. It's a next level. <laughs> Lastly, as we uh, dim down towards our time here, I think one thing that's very important, especially in this day and age that we're in, especially as myself as a millennial, I think I sit down every episode this time, um, is because I've been raised with technology and without. I think we're the ones that is that is that threshold, you know, the, us millennials. So I just wanted to know for your school, and especially, we don't know where technology is going in the future. Mm -hmm. um, with AI, you can see how fast a type of technology can get adapted. Absolutely. So I like to know, you know, what is the, what's the environment around technology sure. in the school? I mean, when new things come out, do you, you know, implement it right away, or you kind of wait to see what going that's on? A good, that's a good question. And then go for it. I think our school sees the value of technology, but also the necessity to be away from technology. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of the students coming in that have spent their entire childhood on an iPad, for mm -hmm. example, um, and don't know how to write, don't know how to mm -hmm. hold a pencil in their seven. Um, and so we spend a lot of time focusing on some of those skills outside of screen time, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also value that there are educational adaptive applications, programs that can support uh, learning catching up as well as extended um, advanced courses as well. Right. Um, um, to your question about, um, you know, do we jump right in? Um, maybe experimentally. Um, and I think that's one of the benefits of having a lot of younger staff is maybe they've heard of a new technology, a new program or new app, um, or they um, tried it out in school recently or is something like that. And they want to try it out in a class. Um, and again, as a young school, we'll say, hey, try it. Let us know. Does it work? Was it fun? Did the kids, were they engaged? Um, did it advance them academically, socially, emotionally? Um, if yes, let's expand it. And that now you're the expert in the school and you lead a PD session to teach the other teachers how to do it. Um, I guess my next question was going to be, is there any events or activities that stand out to you Ooh. in particular you know, that, <laughs> that you guys do with these boys that's sure. so special? Um, yeah, I think my favorite thing, um, I mentioned that we're, we're values based, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're focusing on, um, is, is the leadership side and motivation side. Um, our, the Qatari society is really values, um, rank and status. And so we've kind of adapted a system kind of like Boy Scouts, if you will, um, where the students have to earn ranks and they go through a variety of things that are non-academic. So it's everything from uh, attendance, behavior, to community service, and they, they earn these ranks. And the assemblies where they get these ranks, earn these ranks, is completely student-led. The principal may be there to shake a hand, teachers are only up there if they're invited by the students, and it's not pretty yet, I'll be honest, but they are loving it and learning, and it really motivates them when they see their best buddy earning the next rank, and they think, mm -hmm. oh, where's mine? Yeah, I want to competition. Exactly. It, it, it really is motivating yeah. and rewarding for them, and it's really nice to see, especially their fathers, proud yeah. of their sons earning these ranks <laughs> and progressing through you know, this, this status. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a really cool thing that I think not a lot of schools do something like that. Right, right. Um, so yeah. we're, we're proud of that. Okay. Thanks for that, Stephanie. Um, Got some young boys, you know where to send them. <laughs> you got give me a little bit more about 
because it, it is young boys. You know, young boys could be tough. It could be a little bit. Uh, so earlier I spoke to someone and they said that their architecture mm -hmm. is in the shape of a hug, oh. like the <laughs> arm, you know. Sure, okay. So it's. I know these kids could get a little tough and rough sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, you know. Sure. I, I just wanted to know, like, you know, what is your strategy that you guys That's you know, a good question. You know, and, and then after, I know you guys are new, right? Okay? But what is your first graduate? So with that two years, we're up okay. to 10th grade this year, and then we'll grow into 11th and 12th after that. So is that 26? We'll be our first graduating class. Okay. Yeah, so. That's exciting. Um, to, to get back to your question about boys and that kind of thing, the way that our, I guess, owners developed and built the school is with a big footprint. Um, so I mentioned it's only 400 students this year, but even just going from, say, the pre-K class to um, our cafeteria or to the gym, I mean, it's a walk. Mm. It's a walk. It's a you campus. know, the boys got to, it is a campus, right? Exactly. And the boys have to move. Because if they don't move, they're going to get in trouble, right? They get yeah, wiggly, yeah, they get, yeah. you know, I'm going to still I start. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have four sons, so, so I, I know. I know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and so we found we, we've really incorporated the, the physical side of, of what boys need to grow and develop yeah. into the day, honestly. But then they focus when they're when they're in the classroom then they focus because they're not antsy and wiggly. They kind of have gotten all that out and then they're ready to, to learn. Nice. So much definitely. Yeah. I know we're ending off our minutes here, but if you just let our audience and our listeners know exactly they can get some more information about the school. Sure. Yeah. Um, so our website is VFA and then Valley Forge Academy, Qatar.com. Uh, same on Instagram. That's a great way to find out more because we have a lot of videos from on campus of the um, students doing their assemblies, for example. Um, interviews with teachers are all there. Yeah, thanks for this opportunity. Oh, no worries. Uh, is there any advice that you would like to give to the individuals who are here uh, today? And, you know, maybe that candidate that's looking at you right now is interesting. <laughs> Great, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would say do your research. You know, it is a, a jump to, to move to the Middle East. Um, I've loved it, but it's not for everybody. And we are looking for people that want to stay and grow with us. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are frank and honest with everything that, that entails. And so I encourage you to do your research um, about us, about living there. Um, and I hope we'll hire some good ones. Yeah, no, I hope so too. Very uh, good luck to you guys. I hope Thank you get you. exactly what you guys are looking for in regards to a candidate that does uh, stay there mm -hmm. uh, for quite some time. I know how that can be that turnaround time, you know. You don't want to start that cycle. No. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Stephanie. Listeners, thank you so much. Uh, another 15-minute break. And, of course, we'll be right back here with uh, another school in order to see where your next venture may be. Right, educators. See you soon.